Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Configuring Data Center ESI Lag Learning Byte. And here is our topology. We have our five devices in our data center, Spine 1, Spine 2, Leaf 1, 2, and 3. And then we have Host 1 and Host 2. Host 1 is connected to Leaf 1 and Leaf 2. And we want to connect that using an ESI lag. And you can see here on Leaf 1 and Leaf 2, they are both using interfaces XE004 to connect to host 1. And that will all be a part of the aggregated Ethernet 0 interface. And then we see Leaf 3, which is connected to host 2 on the XE004 interface. And both of these hosts will be in the same subnet, the same VLAN, and we'll be using the same VNI. And so what we want to do is we want to connect host 1 with that ESI lag, and then we want to allow communication between host one and host two, or rather enable communication. And then this is an ESI lag. We want to have that redundancy. So we'll show that if we take one interface down, that the host will use the other interface and vice versa. Okay, so with that, what about the ESI lag attributes? We talked about this briefly, and we have some information up on the left-hand side here. We have XE004 as the interface that we're using, the member interfaces. The aggregate is AE0. And then the ESI. We could set this manually, but we're going to auto derive this from the LACP system ID. And you can see the LACP system ID here on the left. I've just made that a, an easy to remember system ID. And it will be functioning as an access interface in VLAN 10. So keep that in mind as we go through that. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of Leaf 1 and get this started. All right, so this is Leaf 1. What we first need to do is we first need to, with any sort of aggregate Ethernet, we need to set the device count for aggregated uh, Ethernet devices. So we set that under chassis, and that is aggregated devices, Ethernet, and then device count. We're just using AE0 here, so we only need one. If you needed AE1, 1, AE2, and AE3, and so forth, you would specify more of a device count here. And to be honest, we could say something like 10, and that would do AE0 through 9, and all it would mean is that when we're finished, AE0 would be up, and all the rest would be down. Wouldn't really have much of an effect. But we're going to keep it at 1 for now, since that's all we really need. And then after that, let's jump to interfaces. Let's see what we have for the XE004 interface, and we see that it's configured, but it's just configured for family Ethernet switching, and we really don't want that. So let's go ahead and delete that interface, and then we'll set XE004 uh, to participate to be a memory interface of the AE0 interface. And we have to specify 802.3 AD under the GIGI options configuration here for XE004, and then we specify AE0, just specify the aggregated Ethernet interface. And that's all we need to do for that interface. And then we need to configure the AE0 interface. And there's a bit more to configure here than what we did on the member interface. And we need to configure the ESI configuration. And first, we need to set the how, how we're going to specify the ESI, the Ethernet segment ID. And we have a few different options here. And we can set just the identifier, just spell it all out. and we can do that, or we could just say auto derive. And that auto derives the ESI value from the LACP system ID. And so we're going to do that. Oh, I guess I need to spell, specify LACP. I don't think there's any other options besides LACP. And so we're going to just specify LACP there, since that is our only option. And then we also have to specify the mode it runs in. And all active is the only mode that is available. And what that means is that both interfaces can forward traffic. So both member interfaces can forward unicast traffic. Now, one thing to point out here, that doesn't mean that both interfaces will forward BOM traffic. Only one interface will be forwarding that at a time. And we'll look at that in the verification part of this learning byte. And then after that, we need to configure the aggregated ether options. We need to configure LACP. We'll set it to active. And then we need to set that system ID. And we'll set system ID. And recall that is 11, one, colon 12, one, colon 13, colon 14, colon 15, colon 16. And recall the ESI will be derived from that. We'll be able to see that a little bit later too. I'll show that to you as well. And then we need to set the unit information, the logical information that is. 
and we want family ethernet switching and recall that it is an access interface with VLAN V10, which uses VLAN ID 10. And so that's all we need to configure there. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration and then we'll jump to leaf two and kind of mirror what we have here. And so here is leaf two. We first, of course, need to set that chassis, aggregated devices, ethernet device count, set that to one. So we have the AE0 interface available to use. And then let's jump under interfaces and let's delete XE004. It's configured the same as leaf one. We don't need that configuration. And then we need to specify the Giga Ethernet options and specify it as a member interface of AE0. And then we need to configure AE0. We need to set the ESI parameters and we're going to say auto derive LACP. And then we're going to set ESI and of course all active. And then we need to configure the LACP parameters. LACP, we'll set that to active and then we'll set the system ID to the same system ID, it has to match on both sides. And these are not short. I'm an ethernet switching, VLAN members V10. And let's commit that configuration. And now that it's committed, let's go ahead and look at the AE0 interface. Okay, so we have some good information here. We have the interface is AE0, the physical interface. It is link up. Great, we wanna make sure it's up. That means that we have member interfaces that are functioning correctly. That's great. And then I want to look at the ethernet segment value. That's the ESI. And notice how it looks similar to the LACP uh, system ID, but it's slightly different. There's a zero one in front and then it's padded with a zero 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 one zero zero. So that's how it derives it from the LACP because here is where we have the actual LACP ID. And that's where it got it from. So everything looks really good there. And so then let's then look at the LACP statistics for A0. And with our setup, we actually didn't need to specify A0 since there's only the one member interface here for A0. And you can see here though that we do have interface A0. And then we do have XE004, which is the member interface. And it is receiving and it is sending LACP packets. That's great. That's exactly what we want to see. And then let's look at the LACP, if I could type, interfaces A0 extensive command. And we have a bit more information here. And this is actually really, really good and important information. And we'll want to correlate this with LEAF1. But what we see here, or, or rather what I want to point out is, notice this system identifier here. That is that system ID. And notice how that is in the actor, for the interface that is the actor position, or the actor role. And then we have this other MAC address that is the partner role. Now, what we're gonna notice is when we look at LEAF1, that's going to match. And that's very important that it does match, because if it doesn't match, then host one's going to think that it's two separate hosts it needs to send traffic to and it'll totally break the, the lag setup. So let's go ahead and jump to leaf one and run that same command. And you can see here that yes, we do indeed have the exact same system identifier and that MAC address. And they are both uh, for those interfaces and they are both in the exact same actor and partner role. So that's exactly what we should see. Yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to host one and attempt to ping host two. And if help if I could type the IP address correctly. And we did get a duplicate packet right off the bat there. And that's, as long as that doesn't repeat itself, that's actually not a bad thing. There was just something stuck in the buffer. But you can see here, we do have communication between host one and host two, so that's perfect. That's what we want to see. So with that communication happening, there's gonna be EVPN routes being passed around. So now let's jump back to the devices. Actually, let's go to leaf three and have a look at things because recall, host one is connected to uh, leaf one and leaf two and sending traffic to host two, which is then connected to host three. So we can look at uh, the route table uh, look for some routes with that. So let's go to leaf three. And here we are, let's do the show route table, BGP, EVPN.0. And there's a few things that I wanna point out here. We have these two routes here and notice that we have this ESI 
That's our ESI there. That's that value that is set that was auto derived from the LACP. And we have it here in these two routes. And these are type one routes, uh, type one eVPN routes. And you can see here the loopback addresses. And I didn't talk about this beforehand. I did have it in the topology. The loopback address for leaf one is 192.168.100.11. And the loopback address for leaf two is 192.168.100.12. And you can see that we are getting advertisements. And the first route is the AD EVI route. And the, the second route is the AD ESI route. And the, the AD EVI route advertises the remote EVPN instance to which the route belongs. And the ESI route advertises the ethernet segment. So that's a very important that that shows up. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bring down an interface, a member interface and see what happens to the traffic. We look at host one, we see that the traffic is still flowing just fine. So let's actually look at leaf one. And before we do that, I do want to show one other command. We'll look at the extensive command for AE0. And you can see in here that it says eVPN multi-home status blocking bum traffic to ESI. So this is not the member interface that we have here on uh, leaf one. Their, their member interface of the ESI lag is not going to be forwarding bum traffic. If we jump to leaf two, we'll see something different. And you can see here that it's set to forwarding. So that will be forwarding bum traffic on leaf two. And so that's how that works with that. And so the next thing I want to do, let's jump back to leaf one and let's go to xe slash zero slash four. And we can see here, it's not disabled. Let's go ahead and disable it and see what happens. All right, so that interface is disabled. Let's jump to host one and you can see the traffic is still flowing. And there might have been some traffic loss. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't think I switched back quick enough, but sometimes there's like a little bit of traffic loss, sometimes not. So let's go ahead back to leaf one and delete that disable command to re-enable the interface. And then let's jump to leaf two and disable that interface. So XE004, set disable, commit, and let's jump back to host one, see if we can catch it. And sometimes it won't. Sometimes you actually won't lose any traffic because the switchover happens that quick. And we're actually not losing any traffic. And that, that's actually a good thing not to lose traffic. I have seen it to where some traffic is lost, but there's no traffic lost in this instance. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and verify ESI lag in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.